Welcome, um, this is Anna Galletli, and we are going to start talking about um, the next part in Unit 4, which is that gross anatomy of your upper body blood vessels. Alright, so you got a lot of different pictures you can use for helping you identify these blood vessels. Please remember to use the terms list and only memorize the ones that you're actually going to be tested on. This picture has way more on it than you actually need. Okay, so right here you see that brachiocephalic artery coming off and that is going to split into the common carotid and the subclavian. Now on these I want you to remember the siding. So you've got right brachiocephalic, right common carotid, okay? The reason I want you to know those and remember right is because the right and left are asymmetrical. Okay, so you need to be able to distinguish them. Most blood vessels, I don't care if you put right or left. On um, these, I do. So, right subclavian, right brachiocephalic, right common carotid. So, the brachiocephalic is the branch off the aorta. Okay, and then this is going to split into that subclavian and right common carotid. Okay, now you'll notice that on the model, even though everything's colored in red, they're putting the word artery at the end. You need to do the same thing. Always, always, always write artery at the end or vein at the end because some of these things share names. And if you don't indicate which one it is, we don't know that you know what you're talking about. Okay? So coming back to your right common carotid, that is then going to split into the external and internal carotids. Now, my trick for this is to always look at the branching pattern, okay? So I'm actually gonna zoom it in again, okay? So what I notice is on the external, I have little branches that come off of it, and it's going external or outside the skull, okay? Whereas the internal isn't. There's no little branches coming off of it, and it's actually gonna go into a hole and go into the brain area, okay? So try to remember that. Let's go back down a little bit. So these branches, write out the pattern. Just learn the pattern. It makes it easier, okay? So you'll see right here, you've got the superior thyroid coming off that external carotid. The nice thing is, is that it tells you where and what it does. So superior thyroid is going to the superior thyroid, okay? Then you were, I don't believe we do the pharyngeal, um, so we'll cross that one off. The lingual artery is right here, so you can see that coming off. You have, um, and your facial artery coming off, okay? Um, what else are we doing? We're doing the maxillary right here, and I th think that's it. The superficial temporal artery, okay? Um, coming back down, um, so we're, we're leaving this carotid right here. We're coming over to the subclavian. And we've got this branch, which is the thyrocervical. Then you have the vertebral, and then you have the costocervical. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, learn the order. That will help you remember it. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hard time remembering it. So thyrocervical tells you what it does. It goes to the thyroid and to the neck region, the cervical region. Costocervical goes to the neck, excuse me, goes to the ribs, and then goes to the neck, okay? And then the vertebral, remember in AMP1 you had to learn the vertebral foramen on the cervical vertebrae? It's that little hole that looks like you're piercing the ears of your um, <clears throat> transverse processes. That's right here, and that vertebral artery goes up through it along with the vertebral vein, all right? And I think that's everything on this slide. Let's go to the next one. All right, so let's kind of zoom in a little bit and then we'll zoom back out. Again, learn and memorize your patterns. You have the brachiocephalic right here, the right common carotid and the right subclavian. Then you've got your left common carotid and your left subclavian. Those are the only ones I care about you remembering right and left on it. Everything else is symmetrical, okay? And then the aortic arch is gonna go and become the descending aorta and then into the abdominal aorta. Okay. Now, um, I'll kind of erase that so you can see better. Um, so you've got these branches, all right, and you will see you've got your labels. Okay. So 
you've got right here that vertebral artery going up, okay? Now, they're actually showing the order a little bit different here than on your other one. So now you've got thyrocervical and then costocervical. The vertebral is usually pretty easy to figure out because it's going through those transverse foramina. Just remember that thyrocervical comes before costocervical, okay? Or it's more, thyrocervical is more medial. It's the first one off. You also have, you know, right here, the internal thoracic, which is gonna go down the inside of the cavity along the posterior wall, all right? So it moves inferiorly along that posterior wall, okay? Now, we've got some other things. So I want you to think about boundary lines. We've got this nice split right here that tells you the transition between brachiocephalic and subclavian, okay? But the rest of the boundaries are more imaginary. So you're gonna use your rib, excuse me, your clavicle right here to mark the boundary between the subclavian and the axillary, okay? And then you're gonna use the directionality, so the fact that it's more parallel to define the border for your brachial artery, okay? Now let me erase this so we can look at these branches on the axillary. So the axillary has your thoracal acromial trunk, okay? Um, and it's got right here your subscapular artery, and then your posterior circumflex humeral and your anterior circumflex humeral. I know this is a really long name. You need to remember all of the parts because on the leg we have lateral medial circumflex femoral. So you can't just say it's the circumflex because that makes no sense. You've got to get all of the words in there in the name. Okay. Now. Branching off the brachial, we have the deep brachial, which is going to wrap posteriorly around the humerus and come towards the front, okay? Now, the brachial is going to come down here to the antecubital fossa, and then it's going to fork, and you're going to have the radial artery and the ulnar artery. Now, so I want you to remember the radius bone goes with your thumb, and it's on the lateral or external side of your lower arm, okay? I think that's everything on this slide, so let's go to the next one. All right, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on the brain's um, perfusion. What I want you to memorize is the circle of Willis. So this is the circle of Willis. And I want you to know, let me erase this so you can actually see it. I want you to know that your internal carotid is going to feed it, all right, on either side, okay? You also are going to have the vertebral arteries coming in and feeding it. And this circle is important because if this gets blocked, you can still get perfusion to that side of the brain along those pathways. It can go into a circle. So this adds a really nice level of redundancy. But you do not need to memorize all the branches. All right, next slide. All right, for veins, we're going to go in the other direction because remember, veins are returning to the heart, okay? So we're not going to learn the, the ones of the, the hand. And with the veins, we also have to remember that you got superficial and deep. So let's do the superficial ones first. Here is my cephalic vein. Here is the basilic vein. So the word cephalic means head, right? And to me, it kind of sounds like ceiling. And basilic kind of sounds like basement. So if you take your arm and you lift it in anatomical position and you touch your head, you are touching the cephalic vein. And if you just want to do up and down, you could think of this part as the ceiling of your arm and this part as the basement of your arm. So that's how you keep cephalic and basilic straight. Now, draining into the basilic, I have my median vein right here. So you can see those two merge. Now I've got this lovely redundancy called the median cubital vein. This is the area where you get blood drawn most of the time, and you can see you've, just, you've got one, two, three things where they can um, stick that needle in and draw your blood, okay? So the median cubital is going to be going this way, and it can take blood from here over to here. That way, if you've got an injury there, you can still drain that superficial blood. So the basilic and the median cubital merge, all right, and they continue to go up here, okay? The cephalic continues to go up to here. Now let's do our deep ones. Okay, and I'm going to switch to red just to be confusing. 
So riding along with the radial artery, we have the radial vein. Riding along with the ulnar artery, we have the ulnar vein. Those two merge, and now we change the name to the brachial vein. Now notice what the brachial vein does. It drains and merges with the basilic. Right here, change name. Now we call this the axillary vein, all right? Here we've got our clavicle. When it passes under the clavicle, we're gonna change it to the subclavian vein, okay? The cephalic drains into the axillary, and then the axillary goes under the clavicle and becomes the subclavian, okay? The subclavian is going to drain into the brachiocephalic vein. Now all of this is symmetrical, so you don't need right or left, so you don't really need right there, and you don't need that there, because it's symmetrical. Now, also emptying into the subclavian, you have the internal jugular and the external jugular, and on the next slide, we're gonna blow that up. All right, so here is basically um, where you're gonna kind of use your imagination a little bit, and we've got that subclavian here, and it's like, when are we going to change the name? Well, I usually, depending on the book, they actually kind of change where you change the name. I use basically the, the when it changes from a horizontal to kind of an oblique angle. And then often I usually go after the internal jugular because it just makes sense to me. Okay. There are other books where they'll do it between the two jugulars. I find that annoying because I don't like it. But go back. Okay. Um, so you can see you've got external vessels draining into the external jugular. This one is more superficial, all right? And it's going to be superficial to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So that is one way to distinguish it. If you can see this on the outside of the sternocleidomastoid, it's the external jugular. The internal jugular is thicker. It tends to be more anterior and it's deep to the sternocleidomastoid, okay? So this one is deeper, okay? Um, both the external jugular and the internal jugular veins empty into that subclavian vein, and then the subclavian vein empties into the brachiocephalic veins, the brachiocephalic veins empty into the superior vena cava, okay? All right, I think that's it for this slide. Let's go on. Anyway, this way it goes, oops. All right, super briefly, we're going to look at the drainage. You should remember from the um, AMP1, when you were doing bones, you had your sagittal sinus. This is where that sagittal sinus is following along the sagittal suture. It is a major drainage canal. It is actually not truly a vein. It is a separation of dura mater. Okay. You've got other sinuses in here. We're not going to memorize those. I want you to memorize the, sa the superior sagittal sinus because we use it a lot. All right, so what I want you to remember about all of these sinuses is that they're all basically going to come around here and go through the jugular foramen. They're going to go through the jugular foramen and um, through the bony feature, which you should remember from A and B1. If you don't, go look up at a picture and... If you've got a model, stick your finger in it. And then that's going to go down into the internal jugular vein. Some of it will also be going out through the vertebral artery, uh, excuse me, through the vertebral vein, but that's not being shown in this particular picture. Okay, that was the last of the slides for the upper body vessels. So we will end here. And um, I believe we go on to unit five, the abdominal vessels.